Hello YouTube, this is that BMX guy, and this is another looking inside video. We'll be looking inside the Sturmy Archer S3B. It's made in 1970. It used to actually be laced into a 16 inch wheel. Um, it is for a Raleigh shopper or folder or RSW or whatever they called them. I'm not really sure what they were, but it has this little tiny 55 millimeter drum brake on it. This is like the first time I saw one like this. Normally when you see drum brake hubs, they have, I guess a 70 millimeter and maybe a 90 millimeter, but this one might be easier to lace. Uh, all the spokes will be the same size and with a 20 inch wheel, it'll just be easier to manage. Uh, the other thing is I might have a project for it or maybe I'll use it on my folding bike. I don't have rear cantilever mounts and this brake will be better than any roller brake ever will be. Um, it looks like a normal three speed, it's a little dirty. Uh, but yeah, the drum brake is what is going to make it. Here's the cable it came with. So we have the piece for the brake to stop the cable, which goes into the slot right here on the arm. So it would stop right there and then this part would actually go into here and actually be what you pull on. Um, as far as the cable goes, it looks like the cable just sits next to that spring and the spring out here is kind of just sitting there. I don't know if it's really that needed or not. It just helps keep load on the cable I guess. But yeah, we'll get to disassemble on this and we we'll even clean it up in this video, so be ready for a, a long video. Okay, so we have it set up on the table. Um, so, I'd like to point out a few things about this as I'm here. So we have the exploded view to help with things. So we know that the brake is all its own little assembly. It has like a cone and lock nut inside there. So that's going to be what's going to be difficult to get this thing apart. Um, it kind of looks like, you know, this is shorter. So I'm going to show the difference between this whole mechanism compared to an AW. Um, for some reason, this didn't include a cover, but you can probably put a cover on there even with a 13. As long as you space out all these spacers on the this side versus that side. I'm not sure why they did it that way. It shows there's no anti-turn washers, which kind of is interesting. I guess you don't really need them with 16-inch wheels, but I would still use them. Um, you see how it says 1967? So I'm assuming then it's around that time, but this is 1970. Um, some more interesting tidbits about it. it it's one of those hubs that don't have, you know, Patent number crap all over it, which is interesting too. Anyway, well, we're, we're gonna actually start unraveling this, hopefully, without messing up the camera placement. Uh, there's cruddy spacers on here. There was a lock ring, there was a 16 tooth cog. When I feel it this way, it's kind of like not that great. It could be a little bit smoother. It kind of these bearings right here might need to be replaced the ball ring bearings this might be a fight to get this thing off it's gonna be a fight in general so I'll start taking it apart unravel the accent on this side the other accent for the other side is somewhere I'm not really sure where it is this might be the accent Just a spacer. Pop this spring off. It shouldn't be that difficult to pop it off. Um, it's a little crusty. Um, all this stuff should be loose already. So, undo these. I'll try to view to the camera.
Yeah, we got all our wrenches ready. In case you were wondering what wrenches you need, it's the same wrenches you would use for any of the hubs. Two adjustable wrenches. So just undo this. I don't have a vice handy in the bedroom. Uh, then maybe in the future I'll put a vice on the desk. I'm supposedly getting a new desk here. This is going to be interesting. I really don't care about the desk, but siblings seem to think that the desk is decrepit, even though it's from 2000. One, something like that. And it's not that old. It's holding up fine. I'm trying to make reason for taking forever to get this off because this is not completely fast. This kind of looks like just the, the other nut right here. Which they seem to be a lower profile accident. So I'll just hook them together. So this right now slides right off. This little baby 55 millimeter drum. Um, I was thinking of putting this on my folding bike, but I'm looking at the rubber, if it's even considered rubber anymore. And I wonder if I just like glue new pieces of rubber on there or find one of these in like new condition. But it is kind of cool, it's like a little tiny drum brake. You no, know, for your car, your motorcycle. Um, I was thinking maybe this hub can go on my Speed Uno. It doesn't have rear brake mounts, but it does have like you know, coaster brake arm mount, and this seems to be the right distance for that. There's always the AB style hubs. I don't know what they're called now. They might be called XRD or something like that. RXLD. Um, they have a 70 millimeter brake that you can just buy this whole assembly if it wears out. It'd be nice if this sold pads, but they probably don't. So we can look at the inside of the drum. The drum is small. It's just built into the hub. There's this piece of plastic on here. It was actually on the wrong way when I got it. I flipped it around, it's supposed to be this way. Or it, it, does it even really do anything? I mean, does it make a difference other than looking ugly? But it's pretty cool, it's a little tiny drum. Um, like I said, this is recessed. This might be a pain to get off. We're gonna try to get that off without, I don't know, hating myself. Right, that has to come off first before I can even do some other stuff. So we have this 15 mm wrench that doesn't go in there at all. We do, however, have a socket. So I'm going to go look for that. Let's see if it's the right length. So yeah, I've got the socket ready. Um, a vice would make this a little easier, but this definitely works. I'm just going to spin it off. Just give it some part. I'm not sure what the wrench is I need to get in there. Um, it's kind of like a Detroit wrench at this point. But this is a different size nut altogether. This is like a much bigger than the axle lock nut on here. That might be how they normally are. I, I don't really know. Can I watch right no. Since it's a square nut, you can't get the ratchet on there now. Or socket wrench. At least these threads are short. They're not really long. It's still is like 16 millimeters, maybe it's a good one. Uh, it's something that you need like a, 
I don't know what you call it. But in the trucking world, there is a Detroit wrench that works with the valves and all the goofy adjustments of their, their head parts. And something like that would be great for this. Um, or just a square socket. The same depth as that little, this Craftsman socket I got, well, probably 25 years ago. So once I undo this guy, finally, which it doesn't seem to want to do. So the only issue is like adjusting this kind of the, the fun factor. <laughs> Judging by the dirtiness of this, I don't think this is ever taken apart. Um, the fact that it's very clean in here and it doesn't look like the brakes were used, it probably wasn't taken apart since the first day it was bought. But this is a different size race. I wonder if I have these in the stash. I, I didn't really look at the diameter inside. So my little vice right here is even as a crescent wrench. Look really fine with that. Um, I'm not sure how long this might take. This might actually have to be edited. This might not come off at all. Like this. Uh, I'm just gonna actually get back to you when it's loosened. Okay, so after a couple minutes there, just kind of crack loose. take a look at the guts so we look inside there if you can see inside there at all I'm gonna try to some light. okay so there's like a little bit of a difference she has a pretty far in bushing there's still a normal 10 points of engagement you know ratchet in there but it's pressed in deeper kind of see how it's I don't know, grease in there. It looks like there's grease everywhere. Um, this one's probably helping with the video situation, but yeah, that brake drum is pretty thick and it looks like it's just pressed in into a normal shell. It's deeper. If you look at the shell, you can kind of tell that <clears throat> there's a little bit of a, a bulge to it, like on time. Or the fact that it was just like that. I don't know. So here are the guts. Nice and dirty. Um, let me go get the AW one to show the difference from that does. So the nice thing about the seams is you can pause it. So here's a cleaned up rebuilt AW or sort of just not really used. And here is the AB guts, like they're kind of the same as the AB hub, but you can see the difference. There's almost like a good, I'm going to say half inch or seven millimeters difference. Between the height of where the poles hit and other things. Everything else kind of is the same as far as where the gear gauge is or the gear ring. And the poles of the high gear, all that stuff is the same right there. It's just the planetary gauge is longer. That's all. Um, I might actually have the short guy in the stash, but you could still put this in the AB if you had to. There's the AW shell. You can kind of see the difference between the AW shell and the AB or S3B shell. Lengthwise of the actual flanges is the same, but just the end is different that's pressed on. It's the interesting thing about this company, like almost everything kind of shares the same basic parts. And it's easier to get parts because of that. It's one of those things that like Shimano just won't do purposely, I think. Just to make sure you have to buy new parts from them versus just rebuild ones. Because <coughs> you know. So basically just the white plate leaves it. It's a throwaway society. Everything is just trash. So who needs to have nice clean oceans, right? Who needs that? Anyway. 
Jesus. Um, I just thought it was kind of easy just to do this situation, but I guess not. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it. So getting this off. This in between the grime, and we're just gonna use um, the adjustable for the outside. I could probably get away with that socket wrench, but it's kind of like close fit around the nut edges. It wasn't even tight. I just wonder if like, someone tried to adjust it and then greased it with weight and stuff. Like, I don't know. I think. So this has been a multi-week project. I think I started this, uh, let's say, the middle week of April. This is like technically the last week of April. Start undoing this cone nut to watch it disappear into my wrench. Okay, so that is here. This has another washer on here for some reason. I don't think that's where it's supposed to be. Or no, it's, no, it has the lock thing. I can feel it there. It's just a matter of getting it off there. Which might not come off there easily. This is the square key block washer to make life easier and not have to worry about the guts tightening up on you. The thing that doesn't seem to come on any of the new hubs anymore, which is kind of important to me. I don't know why. Some light decided, hey, we'll just make sure you have to rebuild this. I'll just, we'll just throw them away. Because that's the goal. Just make sure you spend more money on the new things. Okay, so that's off there. Um, this is kind of disgusting. So we're going to make a, a modified 16 millimeter wrench. Trying to do this with enthusiasm because I know somebody, some comments said, Oh, you just sound like you're too depressed. Like, you ever hear the word fuck you? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Pardon my French. I know, like, it's supposed to be informational, but when you try to do helpful videos on what you do in life, it just seems everyone wants to rain on your parade. story of my life. Anyway, so I'm unthreading this because the whole reason I even talk about anything else is because it takes too long to unthread things. This is the drive side cone nut coming off. This is just a normal drive side cone nut, nothing fancy. It's the same as the AW. It just seems to be filled with white grease. And crap, it's all over my fingers now. The good thing is both sides are completely different, so you can't really confuse them. I like pulling the spring out now. It doesn't look very straight, does it? At least it still has this little cap. It's a metal cap. Oh no, I don't think that's metal. No, that might be metal. Yeah, the metal caps are nicer, I think. Or, I don't think, I know. I just like the metal more. It's longer. It says the stepped driver that was on all the later 60s hubs that were up to today pretty much well up to the 80s the 80s is still today for me because that's what i remember this is still the same as basically the s5 you know these balls don't look that bad either they're nice and shiny still they just felt like crap maybe they were just tight i still probably replaced them just for the sake of replacing them just like I'm going to replace these. I don't know. This is better to clean out the whole situation. Dissecting it, it looks like everything was greased. 
so I think it's a good idea to take it apart because grease really slows these hubs down fiercely. And the clutch has a one piece guy on there. Isn't that interesting? I usually don't have a one piece clutch housing on them. Oh no, I see what's missing. There's the thrust washer is missing. There should be a thrust washer there. Or I gotta look at the other one and see how thick it is, but it's a little bit thicker. I, it looks kind of thicker to me. I'll just put it on the dirt because everything has to be clean anyway. It's clutch key, indicator, shifter key, toggle key, whatever you guys want to call it. It's all the same thing. A little piece. It has the Meister style clutch, not the little cheapy looking forged clutch. It actually has a Meister clutch. So at one point somebody must have got in here and greased it. It looks like it's been rebuilt. There's no reason for it to have grease if it's from Raleigh, especially. I don't know what that was. It's a nice short axle. Looks like it has a nice planetary cage there. We're actually taking this whole thing apart in this video because we're going to clean it. But yeah, we'll stop doing it. Make sure it's stuff. Okay, so as you see, I'm just taking it apart. Matching, the matching pin to each gear is staying together. Should I look at them? Oh, there would be. This is the hat washer. The clutch. It's like covered with like Shimano grease. That's what this feels like. Great stuff. Okay, so yeah, it's all apart. Gonna wipe my hands off and take a closer look. Okay, so I just wiped my hands because I just don't want to touch my phone with greasy. Smelly grease. It's smelly grease. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it almost came out from it. Anyway. We got the normal planetary cage. It's short. Oh wait, no, this is normal. This is a normal planetary cage. Or no, ring gear, sorry. Ring gear. Or high gear ring. Or whatever you want to call that thing. I don't know anymore. What's it say on there? Where, where are we at? Number 20. Gear ring. That's all it says. Okay. Um, it's... The problem with this picture is it doesn't show you two poles. You don't know there's going to be two poles in there when you open up. See, there's only one shown. It doesn't even show the bottom one. Like, you could look at this video and like, why is there more than one pole? And take one pole out. You know, not video. Picture. PDF. Image. Visual appeal. I don't know. I'm trying to think here as I'm doing the video because I'm in a hurry to get out of here. So, yeah, it's all greased up, but it's still, like, good condition. The pins come out. They're just pressed in there. So, in the next section, you'll see this thing cleaned. I am not going to show the cleaning practices, but I will... I think I'm replacing those bearings. I'm going to inspect this whole ball ring, make sure it's good. It didn't feel that smooth. Maybe this isn't... This is the thing that's rough. You can't really tell it's rough. It looks okay so far. But yeah, usually this is where all the grime just sits right at that little channel there on the bearing grease. This one's usually pretty sealed and doesn't really get that grimy. Even though when you look between the bearings, there's absolutely no grease at all. Um, it wasn't very, it wasn't greased very well. Like, it's no grease at all on that guy. Um, the thing about a brake drum is that you don't want grease in there or oil. Maybe that's why it was greased in the first place. I, I don't know. But usually everyone says grease is not good for any server rusher, including myself. I think grease does make the hub feel very slow. It already feels slow compared to a normal single speed. But with grease in there, it's like workout all of a sudden low gear yeah that, that feels fine but 
in high gear, it's like you're really excessively forcing yourself to pedal. Um, especially if these recover grease. Because you don't want these slowing down. But they're all with their matched pins. If we're going to. I am going to do the parts cleaning. I'm going to actually omit this thing when I reassemble it because it's dead looking. If it was still round, I would put it back on there, but it's all warped. You know, if you were 52 years old too, you'd probably be warped also. The fact that this hub is eight years older than me is pretty cool though. Now, it's 28 hole. I'm not really a fan of 28 hole wheels on any bike, even 20 inch. Just because of the fact that the spokes just can't handle weight. There's just not enough of them to hold your force. You pedal too hard, you just break the spokes. Um, but the brake itself might be an interesting task. So, yeah, well, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to try to clean this up without, I don't know, what to do about the rubber. I'll just try rubbing alcohol first. And just wipe the rest of the drum with something. Or just use water. How about that? I'll just use water. Water and soap. Uh, this guy is the, the part I really wanted on here. Thinking about it. And I thought it was pretty neat. It was on Raleigh. So I'm with cleaning it and I'll be back. Okay, so we have cleaned everything. I replaced all the bearings in this gear ring. Or ball ring. Replace the bearings in this, cleaned it out. Use brake cleaner on this side. Brake cleaner is something that I needed for the brake itself. It's just to make sure I don't put any oil in the brake pads, but we don't want oil in the brake drum either. I'm not really sure how you keep oil from getting in there when the whole hub is just kind of oiled. But I cleaned out the inside as best as I could. Cleaned out the outside as best as I could. It's a lot shinier now, isn't it? Clean the gear ring. The gear ring paws. Or in fine shape. Low gear ring or planetary case. These paws look like they kind of have more wear on the edges, but they're still okay. And they still got plenty of spring. Clean the axle. The axle, if it looks like it's kind of an uneven wear going on there, you can kind of see it shiny on one side versus the other. But there's nothing I can really do about that because it has that other threading right there. So I just have to work with that. One of these guys was broken. So we just have another one in the part stash. It also didn't have a shield, so I found a the later shield with the angle. So that's gonna go on there. This is the the brake side cone. And I'm not sure if I can pick it up with the camera at all. I gotta be able to pick it up with my own eyes first. Yeah. There's like a pit right there. And there's nothing I can do about that because I don't have any more of these in my stash. There's, at least I don't know where they are. The clutch is pretty wore out. Um, you can kind of see there's wear on it and the edges are a little rounded. So we got a fresh one. At least we thought we did. We'll look for that. Um, we're going to replace that along with this because there's a little dent. I don't know if you can see the dent. But you can see how it's dented on this side. That needs to be changed. This is okay. I'm not really worried about that one. <clears throat> These though, you can kind of see how shiny they are. They're actually really shiny everywhere and they're uneven. And the ends are pretty shiny, so they're getting replaced. We got fresh ones that can go in place. We got fresh gears to take their place. So we'll have four fresh planets and four fresh, fresh planet pins. So these are scrap. 
and we got fresh new pins. Uh, all the other clutch parts I have, I just don't have the actual clutch. So we gotta look for that, but yeah. New washer, new clutch key. Yeah, this was missing. I don't know why there was no washer. Actually, if you notice, like, there's this part isn't seem to be here. It's hard to look at it, but I must have tossed it already. But anyway, the new bearings are in there. There's 316s. 24 bearings is the ideal amount in there. I greased these bearings. Um, so they have an oil-based grease, not whatever was in there. It seems like it was like a soap-based grease on the whole thing. Um, when I look at these gears, I can't really tell they're where. You're not going to tell they're where either. There's just no real light. But this kind of looks like it's in good shape. And this part right here, I'd have. Okay, so if I had to replace that, I can. I, this is the part that I can't replace because I don't think I have the short stack in the stash. So we can get to assemble it. Um, I just need to find my oil and I'll get that started. <clears throat> See the little rag, little thing of oil. Here's the clutch I was looking for. It's shiny nickel plated clutch or lead plated clutch, whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> they started doing that black coating for some environmental reason, but these old nickel plated or whatever they are, they seem to be better. Like, it's harder metal, better metal. This black coating, it just wears like instantly. Or, you know, it just always seems to be beat up. So we'll just start out by putting the plants in their place. Um, fighting chance is just to give oil inside areas that need oil. Maybe even more oil than it really needs. Since they're nice and new, I don't really have to worry about them wearing out or being matched. Everything is fresh. This is my unique little oiler, the Trinity oil canister. Um, they used to be, well, they might still be around, but they mainly specialize in RC car racing. And, um, yeah, it's a nice little gadget for oil. It just makes it less sloppy. So as this takes like, who the hell knows how long to just do this. Get this guy started. Um, this gear, it looks like it's not evenly worn, as I said earlier. But it should break in, not like it's really that beat up looking. That thing sits here, so we're gonna put some oil here. We're gonna put oil on the threads, just to have oil on the threads. It's just nice to have oil on the oil on where the clutch key goes. And we can actually start assembling. So, this may sound like crap, maybe at first. Issue is like when these new parts are old, it's like, uh. okay, check that again. Yeah, 
Now when I look at it, I don't really see anything in the teeth. Maybe there's like stuff in these teeth, because like they can slip on the band. They shouldn't be like fighting me. You gotta make sure everything keeps spinning. Look at like dirt. It's only going this way normally, and yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's a little bit of lighting. I don't like. Next step is the clutch pieces. So, we start with the hat washer. You can't do this two handed. Figure out where the clutch washer will sit. We'll put oil in this. We'll just put it here first. And it would be nice to put it here. If the fresh clutch key, the, the new oil in the lid. There's no clutch. I just have it in my hand. Okay. The new clutch. Let's just. That's, the, that's our engagement slack right there, is this. If the pin, put it, the pin through, it should not fight you for getting in there. Make sure the oil in there. Make sure there's oil everywhere on everything. If you can do that, it's easier just to oil it. It's assembled. That's just to, to oil in the first place. So that's on there. This is what was missing on the hub before, and even on the manual, it kind of doesn't show it there, but we'll use it. The thrust washer for the thrust ring. So we have that started. We got the gear ring, it goes on top. This whole situation, get some oil on this gear ring. Actually, rubs against stuff a little bit with that. Like this part of the assembly is the fast part. It's so much easier assembling it than cleaning it. Especially when there's grime that doesn't come off. Yeah, these are the original paws. They seem okay. I'm not going to change them. Next, we have this. Oil in places. It's good just to have oil just sitting there. Bearings don't want to fall out, fortunately, because that's kind of something that has to happen. Get some oil in there. Make sure all the bearings have plethora of oil. We have this spring, that doesn't really need anything, get that cat hair off there, but we'll get the spring on there. And then we have this, this is the driver, and we'll put it where the clutch sits, Just slides up through. Um, I don't think I really need to oil the outside edge so much. I'm just sitting there with it. Um, sometimes like grease in this little slot, but there's grease in the bearings, and I kind of find that grease in the slot just holds dirt, or cat hair, or whatever. So we'll just not worry about that. I usually don't have an issue with water contamination, and the oil just comes out, it just comes out, I just let it spill out. I just don't want to get it on the brake hub, the brake side. 
But as you see, this is like an easy, fast assembly. I actually did it right the first time. Sometimes it's never the easiest. So we get this hand tight. Right. And I usually. Yeah, I do it a half turn. I think the only one I didn't do was the AM a half turn because it's so wore out. But this one's pretty much in excellent shape. Put this slide washer on there if it goes on. Best shape. Let the cone nut. So we have the basic gear mechanism assembled. We don't have to really do that much at this point. I just use an adjustable because it just gets a better contact. Should be a little bit of slot. And yeah, it's spinning fine now. Maybe I'll have to break in. This is like a little bit of wear on that sun gear. Yeah, that actually is done. So we have the old pieces that can just go in the garbage. Changing the sun or wheels because even they break into the axle. That's where it's fair to use the original pieces. But that might just go away. Okay, so before I even put it in there, I'm just going to put more oil on things. I'm going to say you don't need to do a teaspoon a day anyway. Or a teaspoon a week. Um, let's try to get oil on all the parts that definitely need it. Just because they're constantly rubbing things or something like that. Let's put it on the threads. Maybe put a pool of oil in here since it's good to have something in there. So we just don't want that oil getting into the brake. So I put that in there. Turn this back on. Um, they seem to start at a certain place if it's assembled. Obviously it's not even a rim, so it doesn't matter where you start. I started saying that stuff in the 70s. I don't know. I guess this is where you use your hammer and punch. It's a little harder to do, I don't have a waist or anything to hold it in place. Um, but you could do it. I wasn't really intending to use it. Just give it a couple of taps and it'll tighten itself up and have to be readjusted anyway when you use it. In this case, if I even use it at all, is to hopefully have a brake that works. If the brake doesn't feel like it's working, it's fine. It's gonna be used. We'll see how that feels with the cone. The nice pitted cone I can't replace. To see it has its own little threads. It'd be nice if it just had the same threads all the way down. And the other issue is I don't have a cone wrench that fits in here. Yeah, you 
like a, a special wrench to get down there. It starts nice and easy. Since we missed the air, so I can't keep doing it. This is just a, a looking inside video. I'll, I'll just hand tighten it and I'll just tighten it kind of against it and work with that for now. All right? I recommend finding a cone wrench that fits this if you have this. Um, I don't know where you're going to find it, but I don't know where it is. I can always just do the same thing I had with the other one, or just loosen it slightly and tighten it against it. Um, there's a washer somewhere. You guys remember what I did when I took it apart? I think there was a washer. Is this definitely the washer? It kind of looks like it could have been. But it doesn't seem right that there's a washer there. So let's go look for a, a 3B manual. So we can save it. It shows no washer. Okay, there's no washer. It, there was a washer in there, I think, when I took it apart. Should probably make it easier to adjust. So if you have a, a wrench that kind of elbows down and goes down in there, which is what I would need, you can tighten it together, and it's fine. Um, this was cleaned earlier. I cleaned it with parts cleaner. Um, or not parts cleaner, brake cleaner. So the brake cleaner is usually what you use with brakes. So hopefully it didn't disrupt the brake pads and it wiped out that drum of the brake cleaner. So, um, yeah, normally this ring will go here, but this ring is dead. I'm not bothering with that ring. So, just stick that on there. And all that says is just to use a nut and a um a cone nut or a lock nut. So we have these just look like normal accidents. They're nice and low profile. But I guess they're not. They're just different. There's a rounded edge and a square edge. It doesn't seem to say anything about which edge you want to use. So we'll just put the round edge against the brake. As far as tightness goes, I just would make it so it doesn't rattle. Like that. Stick the slot in against it. You can tighten these two together and that will keep everything from coming off. I don't think that really matters so much because like you kind of want to be able to access this and clean it if you have to. 
we have this spring. The spring this mounts here to here. Put this here. And what does the spring seem to be doing on new hubs? I don't know. Yeah, it just gives it more spring. This is what needed, but it just makes it so there's plenty more spring. And there we got it together. Um, we want to assemble the shield that doesn't come with by default. So we just put that nice shield on there that protects that bearing. You normally need two of these washers. And you got your cog and your lock ring. Um, your lock ring doesn't necessarily have to go on there. There's no cog. If you have an actual axle nut. Now what's interesting is that this doesn't come with any serrated washers, but I recommend using them to make this so that everything stays still in the, in the dropout. But there, we got the S3V together. We cleaned up pretty nice. I'd say it looks pretty clean now. It's just hard to get it to lay even. Have a shadow behind it or anything. It's like, yeah, that's the main issue. So there was a cat from my oil. Anyway, thanks for watching this video on the S3 Bay. I'll look inside a video on this Storm Yarch Rob. There are other videos that I look inside the AW, the S5, the AM, and even show off like my hoard of parts. So you can look for those if you want. Um, if you need parts for these, I got parts. And other things, but yeah, thanks for watching this video on the Sturmy Archer S3B that has a drum brake that's only 55 inches or 55 millimeters. It's, it's definitely a different hub, you don't see this too often. Anyway, this is that BMS guy, and thanks for watching.